guys, welcome to another episode of Vince and Yosh. Yes, and in this episode, we're gonna take a break from giving you tips about specific destinations. Yes. And this time, we're gonna talk about something that has been one of the most requested topics by our readers and followers. Visa denial, guys. Yeah. So what are the most common reasons Bakit na de deny yung visa application natin. We've been blogging for 10 years, so along the way we have made friends with travel agents and even uh, people working sa embassy na nagbigay sa amin ng insight. So, based on everything that we know uh, and based on sa mga na receive namin, kasi andam every day we get hundreds of messages from our readers sa blog and Many of them are about visa applications, and meron sa kanila mga nag share ng mga experiences nila na para na deny po ako, and then we ask ano ano yung reason yun kung kung bakit. So ito yung mga pinahan na papan sa namin ng mga reasons kung bakit nadeny. Sana natin guys. Number seven, weak travel history. Meaning um wala pa kayo or konti pa lang yung ibang bansa na napupuntahan. Marami nag apply kung yara sa mga mahira punta na bansa like. Canada or US yes. or Shenzhen again Europe yan yan pero wala silang any past international trip oh wala so, stamp for example wala stamp yung passports nila sa malalapit na countries like um, Taiwan or Malaysia Singapore Singapore Hong Kong. Southeast Asian countries mm -hmm. so yeah number 7 lang siya kasi hindi naman siya deal breaker yes. meron kaming mga kilala rin na wala naman silang Travel history, first time nila mag, mag apply ng visa, pero Shenzhen agad na approve naman. So hindi nasis, hindi ibig sabihin na kung wala kang travel history, wala kang pag asa na ma approve. Pwede pa rin, kaya siya number 7 lang. Pero malaking bagay kung yeah. meron. Para kang uh, visa application kasi para kang apply ng trabaho. Oh. Tapos yung stamps niyo sa passport, yung mga past visas niyo. Yun yung resume. More experiences. Uh -oh. yeah. Para kang yeah. So think of it as nag apply ka sa trabaho. Okay, number 6, unjustified visa type. So, marami kasing types of visa. So, merong um, may tourist visa, uh, business visa, merong work visa, ganyan. Basically, kung if you're traveling for business, huwag kang mag-apply ng tourist visa. And if you're uh, traveling, kung halimbawa nakahiwalay siya, if you're traveling to visit someone, um, apply for, in the case of Japan, apply for a visit visa instead of a tourist mm -hmm. visa. And another way of categor categorizing um, Visas is uh, yung length of stay. Merong mga uh, 15 days lang, merong 90 days, ganyan. Just make sure that you're applying for the appropriate visa type or length of stay. Kasi we've, we've been getting um, inquiries like one of our readers, they sent us a message kasi parang they were asking for advice kasi na-deny daw sila sa um, Korean visa. But um, when I asked her, unemployed siya, wala siyang masyadong um, documents na naipapakita and yet, she applied for a 90-day uh, visa. Huwag tayo masyadong ambitious pag nag apply ng visa. Mag-start muna tayo dun sa mas realistic naman. Lalo, lalo na kunyari, if konti lang yung pera sa bangko, tapos 90 days. 90 ano? days. Para kung hindi kaya, for, yun, kung hindi kaya i-justify nung sinasapin nyo na requirements, for example, financial documents, yung lack of stay ninyo dun sa ina-apply na country, parang Wag na, wag natin i-push yung swerte natin yung mga guys. Kung wag natin, wag natin i-apply yung kung lulusot, lulusot, di ba? Oo. Pwede kasi nag-grant ka sana ng, kunyari, 15 days visa. Kung 15 days lang yung in-apply mo, okay. pero dahil 90 days yung in-apply mo, mm -hmm. natin na ikatuloy. Or ano din, parang may chances din na kasi nangyayari. Sige, sing, parang single entry lang in-apply mo, pero nakita naman na parang, uy, okay yung requirements naman ito, parang, biglang bibigyan kayo ng multiple, may mga nangyayaring gano'n kayo. Kung first time mo sa isang bansa, most of the time, mas maganda na single mo na i-apply natin. Wag, wag tayong multiple kagad. <laughs> Yun. Unless it's justified. Like, kunyari, if you're applying for a Shenzhen visa for the first time, and yung itinerary mo talagang uh, kailangan mong lumabas, uh, pumasok, tapos labas ulit, ganyan, pasok ulit sa Shenzhen area, then, um, may justify yung bakit kailangan mo ng multiple entry visa. Pero kung hindi naman, kung yung itinerary mo falls for a single 
entry visa, then apply for a single entry visa. Kunyari, first time mo mag-apply ng Japan visa, tapos ang uh, multiple agad. Ganun. So, pwede naman yun, merong ganun, may na-approve na ganun. Pero if you want more chances of approval, single muna. Number five, inconsistent information. Kasi diba when you're applying for a visa, ang daming information na hinihingi sa atin. So, you have to fill out the application form. Um, you need to uh, submit a ton of requirements. And then, sometimes, merong interview. So, you have to make sure that lahat ng information na sinulat mo sa application form, supported by the, the documents that you're submitting, and also, when if may interview, Consistent yung sinasabi mo. Uh, kung ano yung, naka, kung ano yung sinabi niyo na requirements, kung ano yung nakalagay sa papers na sinabit ninyo, dapat pag tinanong kayo about it nung nag-interview, make sure na kung ano yung laman nun, yun yung isasagot ninyo, guys. Hindi yung pwedeng pag nakalimutan yung mga hula kayo, hindi. Dapat ready kayo. Um, sabi nga nung, nung friend namin na um, head ng visa operations sa isang travel agency and she used to work for a Shenzhen Embassy also, um, Visa officers are trained to spot lies. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always say, be truthful, be honest. Kasi if you're telling the truth, it's easy to be consistent. Kasi kahit anong pilipit mo, anong pilipit ng visa officer sa questions, isa lang yung sagot mo eh. Yes. Kasi yun yung totoo. Pero if you're lying, they're smarter than you think. Mm -hmm. They can, they, they know. Mm -hmm. Alam nila yung body lang, language, sa dami na in-interview nila, alam ba nila kung nagsisimuling ba kayo, kung ano mm -hmm. purpose talaga na pagpunta nyo doon, di ba? So, if sa application form, nilagay nyo um, five days lang yung stay nyo, dapat, pag nagsabit kayo ng itinerary, yung, yung flight mm -hmm. reservations nyo, five days lang. And kung may interview, malinaw na five days lang. And minsan kasi may ganun na, parang like five days lang, pero tingnan ko, eh, baka kung mag-extend. Wala! <laughs> Well, oh, yun! Then I know. Oh, yung plano mo, yun na yun. The other day, may na-receive kaming email from one of our followers and they were asking, parang, I want to apply for a Shenzhen visa, but I don't have plans yet. Pero I want to apply na. Pero wala pa akong date, hindi ko pa alam kung, kung hanggang ilang araw ako doon, gano'ng katagal. Basta, pero I want to apply na kasi paalis ako eh. Ganyan, ganyan. Sabi ko, hindi pa rin yun. Kailangan alam mo yung alam mo kung kailan ka papasok, alam mo kung kailan ka lalabas ng area. Hindi pwedeng hindi ko pa sure ganun. Kasi tinatanong din eh application form pa lang tinatanong pa yun. Kami dalawa pag nag apply ng visa lala sa um, Shenzhen countries. Talagang nire-research namin isa-isa tapos binabasa namin pa ulit-ulit yung mga itinerary na ginawa namin and kung ano yung mga requirements na na isasubmit namin. Kasi for sure kahit na dumaan pa yan for example, sa BIA or sa BFS, itcheck yung mga requirements ninyo eh. So, make sure lang na parang consistent kayo, na alam ninyo kung ano yung mga binigay ninyong uh, documents and yung itinerary na sinagmit ninyo para, ano yun, para hindi na kayo ibabalik pa sa inyo, oh, kulang, oh, kulang to. O sabi mo, ilang days ka dito, pero nakalagay sa itinerary mo na eto pa na yung number of days na a number, number of days or countries ang pipisitahin nyo pero hindi mo nilagay, hindi ganyan. So, mm -hmm. basta make sure, i-review nyo na lahat. Paano nag-review lang kayo ng quiz ninyo for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Tandaan ninyo kung ano yung mga nilagay ninyo. Lalo na kung group kayo, tapos isa lang yung gumawa ng itinerary. Dapat na ma-brief mo lahat. Yes. Lalo na kung may interview. Yung ano. Totoo yan. Yun. Pag, pag walang interview, carry pa yan. Pero kung may interview, kasi minsan may interview. Mm -hmm. okay. And even kung hindi normally nag interview yung embassy, pwede ka pa rin nilang ipatawag kung if they want more information. More information. Pwede ka pa rin nilang ipatawag for interview. Yun! Number four, questionable financial records. Yun! Isa sa mga main requirements na yung hindi sa atin para nag-apply ng visa is yung financial records natin. Financial bank records, meaning yun, bank certificate, uh, bank statements, or minsan nga, ano pa nga, credit, yung, card, credit card statements. Yun statement of account ninyo yung for the past 6 months. Yun. Hiningi sa inyo yun para lang makita kung capable ba kayo or kaya nyo isupport yung travel ninyo doon sa country na yun. Isa, isa rin sa mga questions na parati namin nare-receive is magkano po ba dapat yung show money? Like, magkano yung laban ng bank account para ma-approve ng visa? 
So, wala naman talagang, walang sure na sure na sagot doon. Kasi, um, most embassies, they don't explicitly say kung magkano talaga dapat yung laman. For us, ang rule of thumb namin is, kasi usually, kapag mag-apply ka ng visa, um, kunya, pag siya dyan, Canada, yung mga developed countries, kasama sa mga requirements nila is flight reservations at hotel reservations. So, ang ginagawa namin is, um, ina-add namin yung cost ng flights na isasubmit namin, plus yung cost ng hotels na isasubmit namin, and um, allowance per day. So, yung allowance na yon nag iba iba siya eh. So, for example, um, sa France, they need parang around 100 euro per day. Sa may ibang countries na 60 euro per day. May iba naman na 50 dollars per day. nag iba siya eh. So, kami, ang rule of thumb na lang namin, para safe, is dapat meron kami 10,000 pesos per day. per day. So, kami lang yun eh. It's a personal rule. So, Yun lang yung para safe kami. Kasi ang pinakamalaking nakita ko na per day na, na requirement is sa friends eh, na parang um, 100, 100 to 120 euro per day. So, pwedeng gina, ginagamit ko rin yung minsan na parang dapat pag nag apply merong 120 euro per day. Pero it doesn't mean na kung ano yung total nun, yun lang yung laman ng banko nyo. Kasi di, you have to convince the embassy na pagbalik nyo dito, kahit nyo pa ng pangalit. Oh, oh. <laughs> when we see questionable financial records, Kasi a lot of people, they fake their bank documents. And faking hindi lang na parang ipo-photoshop or papagawa sila sa rank, hindi ganun. Um, uh, they fake by parang magpapadeposit sila ng pera, manghihiram umutang sila ng pera, tapos i-deposit sa bank account nila. Tapos kunyari maraming laman, tapos isasubmit nila. But the thing is, most embassies, they require yung 6 months na statement of account para makita nila. So, when we say questionable financial records, pwede yun eh, yung makikita nila na parang, oh, bit may one-time, big-time na deposit dito. Parang hindi to natural. Alam mo na dineposit lang to for the purpose of visa application. And ayaw nila yun. Kasi, in a way, parang niloloko mo sila eh. So, yun. Just to show na parang malami kayong pera sa account na parang kung ano yung makikita sa bank certificate din, na yun yung alaki ng pera. Pero pag chinect naman pala nila yung uh, back statement ninyo for that account para makita mo may one time big time na parang deposit lang para diba from small amount big lang ala naging millionaire ka mm -hmm. <laughs> yung dumarating na yung activities yung transactions kasi sa titignan nila yun eh and somehow dapat consistent yun sa declare mo na kunyari sweldo mo what if um, ang sweldo mo talaga is kunyari uh, 30,000 per month so lalabas yun diba sa bank account mo so, nga may dumarating na 30,000 a month. Kung kung halimbawa na biglang may yun, may one time big time, parang tas hindi yun convincing para sa embassy. So as a bank statement din, makikita mo kasi doon yung average. Ano Average daily oh, balance. ADB. Average daily balance. So doon pa lang makikita na din na parang ay inconsistent but ganito. Aside from ADB, uh, yung maturity nung mm. account. Malalaman nila doon kung kailan ba na-open yung account. Mm. Kasi merong nag-open lang for the sake of visa application. Yes. Eh. Yung parang like mag-a-apply kasi ang dami namin na-receive na gano'n na parang um, mag-a-apply sila next month so nagbukas sila ng bank account ngayon. So, ang ang tip, ang ang payo lang namin is if next year may bala kayong mag-apply ng visa, mag-open na kayo ngayon pa lang. Ngayon pa lang. Diba? Or kung nag-start na kayo magtaba, mag-open na kayo ng account. Lagyan-lagyan nyo ka ng pera. Oo. Oh, ang visa application, ano talaga yun? It's a long process. Mm -hmm. Yun. Parang pinaghahandaan talaga. Yes. Tanggapin natin ang realidad kung kailangan natin mag-apply ng visa. At ganun talaga yung requirements nila. Number three, fake documents. Yan na. Um, meron din kasi na nag-fake ng ibang requirements. Eh. Mm -hmm. Like, um, whether fake birth certificate, or uh -oh. fake na uh, ibang visa. For example, um, recently nag-announce sa Korean Embassy. Kasi ang Korean Embassy, di ba, kapag ka nang, na, nakapunta ka na sa OECD countries, meron ka ng visa from any OECD country, mas mabilis na yung pag-process ng visa and pero mga requirements, financial, yung mga financial documents para hindi na kailangan sa visa. Uh -huh. Pero kasama kasi sa OECD ang Japan. Pero recently, hindi na nag-start sila na hindi na tanggapin yung Japan visa. Kasi ang dami nito fake ng Japan visa. Like hindi pa sila talaga sila nag nagpunta ng Japan or nag-apply ng visa pero meron silang sticker, sticker ng Japan na. visa. 
Yun. So nahuli siya ng embassy. So ngayon, hindi na nila tinatanggap. Nadamay pa lahat. Oo. Uh-huh. Damay uh-huh. lahat ng nag apply ng visa na. Siyempre, di ba? If legit naman yung multiple entry visa mo, or yung visa mo na binigay sa ng Japan, wala na rin value yun kasi na that's a nangyari yun. So, parang nadamay pati yung mga legit talaga, yung mga truthful na nag a ng visa. So guys, pakiusap namin, huwag niyo i-fake yung mga documents. Lalo niyo lang pinapahirapan yung mga talagang gustong makapunta ng ibang bansa. Mm-hmm. Basically, itong fake documents, ito, deal breaker talaga to para sa mga embassies. Kapag meron kang fake na document na sinabit, hindi na nila malamang-lamang, hindi na nila ipoprocess at all mm-hmm. yung ano, denied ka na kagad. Kasi, if you're willing to lie sa application pa lang... Ano pa yung pwede mong gawin pag nandong ka na? Oo. Oh. Diba? Yan. Yeah. Number two, weak ties to sponsor. Many applicants think na just because they know someone or they were invited by someone in the country that they are visiting, eh mas malaki na yung chances nila na ma-approve. Well, in reality, hindi. Hindi. <laughs> Actually, um, having a sponsor can work against you most of the time. Mm-hmm. So, syempre, um, may mga certain exceptions. For example, um, ang Japan, medyo maluwag yan kapag ka may inviter or may sponsor mm-hmm. ni Garantor na nakatira sa Japan. So, exception yun. Pero in many countries, kapag meron kang kakilala abroad, mas malaki yung chance na madenay ka. Mm-hmm. Yun. Kaya nga nila madalas tinatanong kasi it adds another layer dun sa application nyo. Mas nagiging complicated siya. Kasi they have to also scrutinize kung ano yung relationship mo with your sponsor. May mga kilala kami mga kaibigan na parang mas maganda yung travel history nila kaysa sa amin. As in, mas maraming country sila napuntahan, mas maraming sila mga visa stamps, na, visa stamps ganyan. Pero, pag, nung nag-apply sila ng visa na parang dineclare nila na may, may visit sila na friend, then I. <laughs> Basta madalas, nakakasamay. Kung itatali namin lahat ng mga members ng support group namin or kakilala namin na denied marami sa kanila like most most of them may sponsor uh-huh. yun so bakit ba mas nagiging liability na may sponsor ka kasi if you know someone in the country you are visiting there's a bigger chance that you will overstay because you have more reasons to not return yes so that's the i think that's the the reason behind it kailangan nilang tingnan din gaano ka reliable yung relationship mo dun sa nag invite sa Di ba most uh, embassies they require proof of relationship kapag ka invited ka by someone. Mm. So, kung kamag-anak mo close relative, madali yung i-prove, birth certificate lang uh, or marriage certificate kaya na. Pero it gets super complicated if the inviting party is a friend, boyfriend, girlfriend Ganyan. Lalong lalo na if you haven't met that person. Kasi we get a lot of messages na um, ang, ang situation nila is uh, they have they know someone there and they're being invited pero they haven't met them um, in person. Parang they've only been chatting online. And we know that um, LDR is just as valid a relationship as any other relationship. Um, pero that's not how embassies see it kasi. So, um, for them, kahit gano'n nakatagal kayo magka-chat, magka-tawagan, magka-pen, may pen pal pa ba? Magka-pen pal, <laughs> parang ganyan. Um, if you haven't met each other, they will have a hard time believing that person is willing to risk yung kung ano pa yun doon for you. Parang mahirap, mahirap siyang paniwalaan. And number two is kasi, ang hirap din mag-provide ng proof of uh, relationship kung you haven't met each other. Um, yes, you can submit uh, phone bills, you can submit um, pictures. Pic- um, hindi, if you haven't hindi, seen each ng, other. Hindi, pictures ng chat ninyo, uh, screenshot ng chat ninyo. Uh, pero remember, ang dali niya rin mapik. Ilagay niyo yung sarili niyo sa shoes nung mag assess um, The problem is, if madaling ma-fake yung document di kunyari, chat history, ganyan-ganyan di ba ang hirap din naman paniwalaan na natotoo siya yun yun guys, so ang suggestion namin is 
if kaya niya naman, if financially capable naman kayo na uh, mag-apply ng visa, kung confident kayo sa mga requirements niyo, para sa financial records niyo, kaya nila mag-apply. Huwag na kayo mag-sponsor. Huwag na kayo mag-sponsor. So, kaya nila, apply na lang kayo. Pero, pag nag-apply kayo, make sure na yung mga requirements niyo totoo, guys. Ha? Please. So, ito na! Ito na! Number one! Number one! <laughs> number one! Insufficient proof of rootedness. So, ano ba yung rootedness na tinatawag nila? So, rootedness is basically how good your life is here in the Philippines. Na it's good, it's stable enough na hindi mo siya iiwan. Hindi mo siya pagpapalit sa iba pansa. Basically, that you have a very good reason to return to the Philippines. Yun. Kasi remember, these visa application processes are in place to protect the national interest of that country. And isa sa mga concerns, lalo na sa, sa atin, sa mga Pinoy, kasi may colloquial term na tayo for it, eh, TNT, tago na tago. Kasi madalas, nag-overstay. Marami sa atin nag-overstay sa allow. Tapos doon na mag-work, doon na titira, hindi na uuwi. So yun yung iniiwasan ng mga embassies. So you have to convince them that you will not overstay that you will return so how do they make sure of that so they they will ask you for a lot of documents to prove na you you are deeply rooted here in the Philippines you have a stable job so kaya kailangan nila yung COE ITR yes and then um meron kang properties mm -hmm. dito sa Pilipinas like uh, land titles and kumare ORCR nasa sakyan Kahit deed of sale. Deed of sale ng property na yun, o kung loob yung lote na yun. Yeah. And even finances, part of it. Kaya nga sila humihingi rin ng um, bank certificate and bank statements. Yeah. And sometimes even proof of investments, mm. ganyan, um, humihingi din sila. So all of these things, they work together to prove that you have a very good reason to return here in the Philippines. Lalo na yung job part. If you're unemployed, tapos you're applying for a visa, ang laki talaga ng chance na mad madedenay ka. Important na may trabaho ka dito. And alam ng mga employers mo na, na may trip ka. So, kaya minsan namimili din sila ng proof of Even proof of absence. absence. Yun. So, yun yung pinaka, dun madalas nag-zero in yung mga uh, visa officers. Yes. I think. Theory lang naman. <laughs> Well, based sa experience ko guys, ang first time ko mag-apply sa um, ng Shenzhen visa, um, si Osh dumating na yung, ano niya, yung visa niya, yung visa niya, and then ako wala pa, nagtaka ako, and then yung tumawag, tumawag yung taga-embassy na parang we need, number one, additional documents of proof of rootedness mo sa Philippines, like yun nga, land titles or uh, deed of sale of property, and Kung may, ano daw ako, ITR. Kasi that time guys, hindi ko nasabit ang ITR. Yung employer ko, hindi Dante. nabigay. Uh, <laughs> hindi nabigay yung ITR ko. So, luckily naman, kinabukasan. Pagkatawag nila, biglang nag-email naman yung employer ko. Na para, oh, ito na yung ini mo ITR. So, ayan na. Ganyan. Ayun. Buti naman, tumawag sila for additional requirements. And na-approve naman ako after a week. <laughs> so, sorry pa siya kasi tumawag pa. Oo. Oh, oh. Kasi minsan, Wala na, deny na agad. So, yun. Ganun. So, that's it! Yun yung seven na common reasons kung bakit na deny yung visa applications. Yes. At least based on the people around us. <laughs> but before we end this, we want to share na sometimes, kahit na makomplete nyo yung requirements, kahit anong ganda na requirements na sinasabi nyo, minsan denied pa rin. Magdidepende pa rin yun sa embassy. Uh, at saka minsan, ang daming ganun. Meron kami mga friends na parang ang ganda, ang ganda ng lahat, ang ganda ng travel history. Dami nilang napuntahan, dami nilang stamps, dami nilang visas. Tapos marami naman silang pera. Tapos stable yung trabaho. Meron silang properties. Denied, denied pa rin. <laughs> Awa ng Diyos, denied pa rin. <laughs> so, lagi, tapos hindi namin alam kung parang what went wrong, anong uh, nangyari. As in, um, talaga wala, wala naman silang... Wala sila ibibigay ng concrete reasons kung bakit denied. Basta denied. Wala lang stamp yung passport. Parang... Minsan hindi rin malaman. Hindi rin natin alam eh. Minsan, joke na nga namin, parang siguro depende sa mood nung, <laughs> nung nag-a-assess ng visa officer. Uh -oh. Madalas kung, kunyari nag-apply kayo via travel agency, tapos na-deny kayo, 
minsan may nakuha kami uh, messages na parang sinisisi nila yung travel agency. Madalas hindi rin talaga, hindi siya kasalanan ng travel agency. Hindi po nila kasalanan. Oo, oh, madalas hindi rin nila. At the end of the day, ang magde-decide is yung embassy. And kahit, minsan kahit anong um, gawin ng travel agency, nadedenay pa rin eh. Kasi, oh. tas hindi rin nila alam kung bakit. Kasi minsan, ganun talaga. Oh. Ang mga travel agencies naman, ang ginagawa lang naman nila guys is, Tinutulong, tinutulong nila kayo about sa mga requirements mm-hmm. sa mga applications, kung tama ba ito, ganyan kaya, o oh, paano ba yan. Pero hindi nila hawak yung decide, decision na parang o oh, approve din ay hindi. Mm-hmm. Embassy, pa rin ng, embassy pa rin ng may final signal. So, huwag niyo po silang sisihin. <laughs> Guys, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button and hitting the bell icon for instant notification and more future uploads. If you have more topics that you want us to discuss, just sound off in the comment section below and we'll try to create a video about that. Yes. <laughs> so if you need more information about visa application denials, we have a full article about this where we explained a lot more. Just check out the link in the description. So that's it, Tippers. This has been another episode of Vince and Josh, and see you again next time. May the ghosts be with you. Bye. Bye.